Hello and welcome back to Berserker, and this time we're at war against the Batanians. I gotta say, I'm actually kind of surprised, and indeed pretty happy about this, because I wouldn't have expected the Sturgeons, or in, indeed the Batanians, to get involved in any kind of conflict. I would have expected the Northern Empire to potentially be the aggressors here, because they've already, well, technically the Sturgeons have already been kind of, um, I think kind of involved with the Western Empire, right? Anyway. We're going to be attacking this caravan right here, as it is obviously a Batanian, and hopefully we're going to be able to increase our roguery skill. Oh yeah, so I've actually done something a little bit different this time around. So basically, I uh, I saw some comments about the gear changes, okay? So now, the gear changes, obviously, I want them to move as fast as possible, and you also agreed on that. However, some of you gave an extremely good point. And the best point that I saw was the fact that, generally, units that have two-handeds and have no shields, they need the protection of armor. No matter what, they need the protection of armor. And even if they can move fast, the AI is not really going to take any notice of that whatsoever. And I'm talking about friendly AI here. They're really not going to care one way or another whether they move fast or not. I mean, yeah, sure, it definitely helps them to get to their targets quicker, but I'm talking about it in a, in a way of being able to avoid projectiles in some way. But obviously as that is the case, they don't actually do that. Movement speed is kind of useless for them. So generally I decided, hey, you know what? Let's go back to what we had on previously. And I also changed their, their shoulder pads and their gloves as well to sort of give them a little bit more protection in that regard. Their weight has not increased that dramatically because of course they are using Everyone! their old um, their charge! old chest piece. So that's what I'm generally going for right here and hopefully I will be able to eliminate this fellow. Hello there, thank you. Thank you for coming very close to me for some reason. Not sure why he decided to do that, but anyway, we're gonna tell our infantry to charge in now. I've already told my cavalry to do their own thing. And yeah, this is... <laughs> this is very, very nice. Oh yeah. The damage. Oh yes. There's a lovely slow motion right there too. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Don't want to get myself killed. This guy. What? A Kuzate arm trader is apparently very dangerous and someone that I have to be very wary of. Because that guy almost killed me. If you can believe it. Wow. That's actually super surprising. Anyway, we're almost at 200, 200 per weapon proficiency, and my athletics is also leveling up quite nicely too. And there's a nice victory for us as well. So hopefully we're going to be getting some decent roguery skill from this. I can only hope that that will be the case. And of course, we are going to be leveling up more of our forces. Oh yeah, so you may have noticed I have a bunch of, um, well, cavalry. There's nothing else to say about that. These are not mine, obviously, because anytime I try to add cavalry, I seem to get a crash. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try various combinations. It's going to take a little bit longer than I'd like. So obviously I'm not going to do that right now. But generally, I'm, I will be attempting to get some kind of upgradable unit that goes into goes into cavalry. Also, someone had a very good idea, by the way. This was uh, a couple of episodes back, I believe. And you said something like, well, why don't you make your recruits have horses? And then at the very least, you're going to have a much more mobile force in terms of your, your recruits actually being useful. Because, of course, the recruits, they're, they're pretty slow. I mean, we know that, right? They're pretty slow, and, and they're bound to do that kind of thing. You know, they're bound to need something like that. But that's actually a fantastic idea because, well, as you said in your comment, they do not need a horse to level up because they already have one if you know what I mean so this is actually a fantastic idea and I might actually you know what I'm gonna resist the urge to add one now because I think it might crash again so I'm just gonna leave it for the moment but that is something I will try to do and we'll see how it goes there's an army of poachers to be done here uh, I need to f uh, I need to find out who has the smithy who has the smithy right here? Is it is it this guy, the ironmonger? Yes, he's the owner of the brewery and the smithy. So I would like to buy the smithy at Epicrotia. And hopefully he's going to be willing to sell it. I, want, I wish to buy one of your workshops. I wish to buy the smithy. It's going to cost 14000 There we go. 
All right, so obviously, as you know, workshops are not the greatest thing ever. They are quite clearly very bad, and the developers of Bannerlord need to do something about that. But no worries. I'm sure they will get onto that eventually, because there was a task that I did um, in the last 10 minutes or so along the way over to Epicrotia and over to Batanian territory, of course. And the task was in and out And you know in and out don't you? In and out is that one where it basically says, hey, uh, can you help me with this de this land deed or whatever? And then you have to go and speak to this guy. And he just so happens to be the game master in that particular tavern. And he wants you to play a game versus him. Or you can pay him a thousand dinars and then he'll give you the deed or, or whatever. And then you'll complete the task. And that's basically how it goes. Now, in previous versions of the game... That task would give you an overabundance of cash for a thousand. So basically, you'd spend a thousand and you'd gain about four thousand back. So, in other words, you'd gain a profit of three thousand or somewhere near that mark. Obviously, it's an approximation. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. However, they fix that. Yeah, obviously, it's a pretty easy uh, kind of thing that you can take advantage of. And obviously they don't want that. They want you to go through the the hassle of doing that game and, you know, potentially winning, potentially losing. Because obviously they, they, they worked on, on the board games. And while I am not a big fan of those, I personally find them extremely irritating. But, you know, while they did work on those, it is obviously, you know, forcing you to sort of get, get on with that. Anyway, the point is now they give you a reward of eight hundred gold rather than uh what was it before three thousand to four thousand so they've obviously fixed that which is in my opinion extremely sad i i think that it was a lot of fun to be able to just complete that and gain a huge amount but of course i, I mean of course that's going to be fun <laughs> you know very little work for a lot of gain i mean who wouldn't want to have that right you know it's yeah, uh, that would be um, that would be pretty fantastic. But anyway, we've just leveled up one of our children right there. And we're going to be waiting here for some time for the poachers to arrive. But yeah, so in and out has been fixed. And, uh, well, obviously, it's good for relation. I, so I did it anyway. I did it anyway. I paid the 1,000 and I gained 800 back. So I technically only lost 200. And I'm perfectly happy to pay 200 gold for a relation increase. I personally love relation increases no matter where you get them from. Anytime you can get a relation increase, that is a win in my book because relation, I would say even more than warband here, relation is probably the most important thing with the exception of obviously money because obviously you have to you know, pay your troops and everything and obviously food as well. But generally, I would say that relation as an attribute, as a stat, as a, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you can call it, as a resource, I guess, is the most important thing in Bannerlord, especially with villages, towns, especially noble, noble villages, the ones that give you the ability to recruit noble units, they are absolutely fantastic. That, yes, 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 oh, no, 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 he's trying to stab me with a mace? Has he ever been taught how to use a mace properly? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, yeah. I tried jumping into him right there, but that was a bit too slow, unfortunately. Let's try and avoid being attacked. Oh, never mind. Okay, that guy got totally murdered. And there we have it. Fantastic. All right. We lost no people, which is great. And we might level up a couple. Yes, yes. We are getting a couple of level ups right there, which is always nice. And now now that we've done all of this, now that I've finally gotten the smithy that I wanted in Epicrotia, now that I have... Um, well, I actually... Uh, let me just update you on my inventory management as well before we head on to Batanian territory, because that's the thing that I actually wanted to do in this episode. Because, of course... We do want to fight the Batanians. That's the thing that we really want to do. We're going to get a big payday from that because we are a mercenary for the Sturgeons, of course. Anyway, I sold all my armor. Obviously, um, if we have some now back because I've been fighting a whole bunch. I also sold all of my shields and all of my thrown weapons. And I also bought some additional horses as well. I bought these step horses for a cheap, a cheap price. And I also bought some 
uh, Midlands pull freeze, pal freeze, whatever you want to say. And I also got rid of a couple of extra pieces of miscellaneous loot. So loot that I've gotten from raiding, that sort of stuff. And that gave me about 20,000 gold, I think, somewhere near there. And I thought to myself, oh, well, that's a pretty nice amount because that's going to give me enough to be able to deal with, well, buying the smithy. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of useful in my opinion. Anyway, let's sell these prisoners, and my roguery skill has leveled up to 67. We're getting we're getting two skill points every single time now. It seems like having four focus points in this is really making a big difference. I'm going to go for another point in it, and we're just going to go for another attribute point in cunning as well. That, that actually reminds me, I should probably switch to um, one-handed stance once I have two-handed at 200. Because one-handed is lagging behind pretty dramatically. And I think that there are some really amazing perks coming up. Or at least I think... Yeah, this. Fleet of foot. This is one of the most powerful movement speed increases that you can get. 5% is a load of movement speed. And that is something that I would love to get. I actually wonder if there are any other movement increasing things. No, there are no other movement increasing things here. But there is a speed damage bonus thing on the two-handed and also gaining five hit points. <sighs> gaining five. I mean, okay. As I said before, if you take a bunch of HP increasing, you know, perks, then eventually it's going to add up and eventually it's going to be pretty decent. But it's still just five hit points, you know? It's still just five hit points and that's something that I'd like to see changed. At least a little bit. I, I would like to see it be a bit more scalable so that it's not just a flat value, but it's actually something like, I don't know, increases your H your total HP by, I don't know, 2% per level or something like that. Or 2% um, per focus point in this skill or something like that. Because then you're going to have an additional 10% HP. Which, of course, is not that much actually if you if you think about it 10% additional HP is not that much and it would be scalable which is pretty nice because that means that at least then you're going to have an incentive to take the other HP increasing abilities because if there's at least one scalable at least that oh look at him oh he's going sliding he's going sliding anyway the, the fact is, if you have a lot of those other abilities as well, then eventually it's just going to really pay off. It's going to pay off a huge amount in comparison to the way it is now, where it's just flat value, flat value, flat value. So maybe that would be that would be something to consider. Although there are a couple of mods out there that do the same thing. So, for example, the mod that I'm using right now to increase my HP, I believe that is a 2% increase. And I think you can also modify the percentage as well. So if you wanted to, you could modify it to 3, 4, 5%, even 10% per level. Bear that in mind, it is per level. So if you do decide to download this, this mod, which is linked in the description if you're wondering, but generally, if you do decide to do that, and you do decide to customize it to your liking, be a little bit careful. Unless you want to be, uh, you know, superhuman or something like that. Which is entirely up to you, of course. Because that's the beauty of sandbox games. It's the beauty of being able to mod a game and have a modding community that is pas passionate enough to actually create something that allows you to customize your experience however you so desire. Which is super, super fun. Anyway, did I level up my, my two-handed now? Is my two-handed 200? I have no idea. I'm going to try and hit this guy. Yeah. Yes, my thrown weapon skill is also absolutely awful. Yes, it is. It's actually not even that bad. I feel like I'm quite accurate with them, but unfortunately the enemy just seems to go in the wrong, wrong direction every single time I aim at them. Or they die ahead of schedule. Like that, for example. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Let's just zoom zoom. And get this over with. No doubt it will be done very, very quickly. Oh, look at how fast I can move. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so there you go. That is another victory for us. Did I get 200 two-handed weapon proficiency? That is the question here. We got more prisoners. We got more people leveling up. Got more loot. Absolutely fantastic. Everything is going really nicely. Especially considering our roguery skill actually does have a pretty significant impact. I don't know whether you've noticed that so far. Oh, look at that. We have 207 now. Okay, increases your speed damage bonus with two-handed weapons while on foot. 
or gain five hit points. And troops in your party have their hit points increased by five. All right. So obviously, if you think about it this way, and if you think about the fact that, you know, every single troop in my army gaining five HP, that's a significant amount, isn't it? That's a very, very large amount of additional survival that they're going to have. However, I kind of want the movement speed increase for the infantry here. As you see, infantry troops in your formation have their damage increased by 2% and movement speed increased by 2% as well. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment because I think at the moment they have such an amazing amount of protection thanks to their good armor that they shouldn't really have to worry too much about 5 HP because if they get hit 5 HP here and there, yeah, sure, that's going to make them dwindle quite a bit. But in general, it's really not going to kill them. And if they are going to be left with 5 HP, then, well, that's just how it's going to have to be. Anyway, we'll just sell all of this. We'll sell all of this. There's another 10,000, amazingly enough, another 10,000 in cash. And now let's move on. So how are we actually doing right here? Yeah, look at that. My mercenary contract is paying off dividends right now. Absolutely amazing. And I'm thinking what we're actually going to do. Oh, I would have liked. Hmm. Uh, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, I would have actually liked to raid one of these villages, but there's only hardwood here, and there's only grain here. These are not very useful. What is this? Clay? Grain? Yeah, these are absolutely awful. I would like to raid that one. Do I? Did I not have a workshop in Maranath, by the way? I think I did, didn't I? Wait a minute. If I, yes, yes, I did have a workshop in Maranath, but it was absolutely awful. I mean, let's just, let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. Okay, you know what? Let's just go into Seordos then, and we will raid this village. We're just going to go and do an auto-resolve straight up, because it is very, very simple for us to do that. We'll take the prisoners, and then we'll level up all of our forces. There we go. And now we will begin the raid. And obviously, as I said before, the roguery skill is helping us out a great deal, because it does give us additional loot and you may think oh well if it gives you what five percent ten percent more loot that's not a lot but it actually makes a pretty significant difference especially if you consider if you're fighting a high value target and i'm talking about like a vassal or something like that then you have well technically a 10 percent chance or a 15 percent chance or however much your roguery skill gives you to gain an extremely valuable item so that really makes a difference. Anyway, we gained a huge amount of grain right there, and we've raided the village, and that is basically it. Okay, well, that was pff, that was kind of useless, wasn't it? Yes, that was absolutely useless. And the Sturgeons are being completely defeated all over the... <gasps> Wait a minute, hello there. Oh, yes. This is absolutely perfection. Hello there, sir. I uh, seem to have stumbled across you in the worst possible moment. <laughs> For you, that is. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best situations you can be in. Although I do have a, a bit of an injured character right here, so we might have some issues with that. But if we are able to succeed here... I'm going to be able to rescue every single one of the Sturgeon vassals that was defeated in this very large battle. Seems like it was a very large battle at least. And we're also potentially going to be able to take all of the vassals in this army prisoner as well, which I am extremely excited about. So let's see. Let's see whether I'm going to be able to do this. Okay, so these guys are horse archers, right? So they can just go and skirmish. And otherwise I just have infantry right here. So I'm I'm going to play this very carefully right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in a loose formation. I want them in a loose formation because I want them to have the utmost killing zone, basically. I don't want all of them to, um, you know, hit each other or block each other from... Uh, from, from shooting their weapons off. And as you can see, look at all the thrown weapons just currently streaming towards our opponent right here. They really have no answer for this at all. Their only answer is to charge their cavalry in. And generally, yeah, sure, that's maybe going to make a difference, but in general, I don't think so. Ow. Okay, no. No, no, no. Don't die. No, don't die. Don't die. Can I not change to two-handed? I mean, could I not change to one-handed? I can't change to one-handed? What's going on with that? Huh. 
Do I need a shield to be able to do that? I don't think so, right? Oh no, I think I'm dead. I think I'm gonna die. Okay, I'm gonna have to tell my guys to charge in straight away. Even if I do die, by the way, I should be able to take over um, someone else's character. So that's not that big a deal, I guess. I would have liked to have gotten some more experience in this fight. Ooh, that was a nice hit, but no such luck for a kill. I thought I'd be able to get more damage on that guy. But, yeah, not really working out in my favor. These guys on mount are obviously causing us a great deal of problems, but obviously they are done. You know, their army is pretty much done. Oh, nice hit. That was a nice one. Yeah, so wait a minute. Look at this. I'm pressing X right now. This is not changing how I can wield this... How I wield this sword. Which is very strange, because I thought that I created a two-handed slash one-handed weapon. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I changed the grip at the last moment. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well, maybe I'll have to make a one-handed sword separately then, and I'll just have to switch between them whenever I want to use whichever one it is. That might be the case. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so we did end up losing a couple of units, but really nothing to write home about. We gained a good amount of, well, everything. And I'm going to take all of these guys prisoner. Look at this, I actually saved the, the, the liege of the Sturgeons himself. I'm sure he's very pleased and embarrassed about that, being saved by some random mercenary. Okay, so yes, I will be taking absolutely every single person prisoner, because obviously in previous... Uh, well, in previous series, I've been uh, a bit nice, you know? I've been a bit kind to these guys, to these enemies. And I've basically just been letting them go as much as I possibly can. And while in the end, that would have definitely been the way to go, at the moment we are not doing that. And we are, we are basically having no mercy for them. Alright. You did me a good turn. I hope I can repay you. No thanks are necessary, sir. There we go. Good relation increase. No thanks are necessary. Oh yes. No thanks are necessary once again. Uh, look at look at this. Look at this guy. He is... You owe me one. How much... Okay, so... What actually happens... If some of you have been playing the game... What actually happens if you select you owe me one? Shall we find out? Or shall I say no thanks are necessary... To the prince himself? To the grand prince? Hmm. This is a bit of a problem... Because I don't know what he's going to give us. In comparison, is relation actually useful? I don't know. I'm going to say you owe me one. We still got relation with him. Huh. Okay, well, I'm going to play it a little bit safe, and I'm just going to say no thanks are necessary for the most part. But I want to see what happens in the future. Maybe Ragnvad is going to help us, or maybe something is going to happen that is going to give us some kind of advantage or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, we have a lot of units to rescue here and I will be taking primarily cavalry so I will be taking the imperial elite cataphract I will be taking the sturgeon I will be taking the sturgeon and should we take some sturgeon heroic line breakers I mean these guys are literal tier fives right they are yeah they are literal tier fives they are worse than my units though they are worse than the berserkers so I don't know whether it even makes any sense for me to take them, to be honest. The only reason why I was taking the cavalry units is because cavalry is generally where my army is weak. So I'm going to just switch out the raiders, and I will take the Sturgeon horse raiders instead, because obviously if I am a mercenary of theirs, then I might as well look the part a little bit more. Anyway, there's a massive amount of prisoners here. I will be taking all of them that I can have in my... <sighs> that I can have in my army here. You know what? Let's just swap these out. We've got to be very, very selective here. I feel like it is very important for us to do that. Let me do this. And that's it. Okay, so now... Do I want to take every single prisoner? All of these 250? Because we are very close by to Varcheg, I believe. So I should be able to get in there before most of them escape. But I'm worried about these guys escaping because we are over the capacity. You see? That's the main problem. So, hmm. I'll, I'll, take, the, I'll take the high tier guys, okay? Yeah, I'll take the high tier guys. 
and we'll just have to deal with it. Hopefully it's going to be enough. I'll take all the loot. Thank you very much. And now let's go into Varcheg real, real fast. We're moving a bit slower than I would like. But there you go. Okay, we're already in. That's fantastic. So how much? <gasps> 66,000 gold as a result of selling our prisoners. Isn't that amazing? I think that's pretty cool. So let's do it. 10. Are you really serious about that? Just 10? Okay. Well, I'm a little bit, um, <laughs> I gotta say, a little bit disappointed by 10 skill points only. I would have expected much more than that. But, okay. I mean, who am I to say, eh? Who am I to say? Maybe, maybe, um, maybe there's a reason for the, for the fact that roguery is so difficult to level up. I really don't know, but oh well. Whatever the case, I will be selling a bunch. And uh, did we get anything really useful here? No, it seems like we didn't really get anything that good. So, I guess the best thing for me to do now... Uh, what, what is the best thing for me to do? Actually, take a look at my, um, take a look at my skills right here, because I did level up. We have the 75 level perk to, uh, to, to select. Let's have a look here. Okay, so in best... Uh, well, obviously, it's not implemented yet, apparently. And villagers of your clan recover 20% faster. Don't really care about that. Defeated villagers and caravans give 5% more access to their inventory. Hmm. I will take that. Just because purely the other one is not, uh, it's not implemented yet, which is somewhat unfortunate. Anyway, I'm going to spec into smithing here because I've already spec'd a whole bunch into smithing. I will be specking more into medicine as time goes on. Don't worry about that. And otherwise, I will be putting another point into cunning. And there we have it. All right. So, the best thing that we can do next, what is that? Are we going to get a... Oh, oh wow, I'm rolling in cash right here. I have no idea how that even happened. It just seemed to creep up on me. It's all because of this mercenary contract. The mercenary contract, once you start defeating enemies, seems to really pay off a huge amount. And on the other hand, look at the workshop. <laughs> the workshop gives me 80. Really? 80? Oh, that's awful. Okay, anyway, let's go into the smithy real quick because I would like to make a one-handed sword because apparently I cannot switch between the two modes and I don't know what's going on with that. So I'm thinking we'll make something like a scimitar or something like that. I really like those. Maybe something like this. Oh, this is still going to require too much of this, but I might be able to refine it. Yes, I can indeed refine that, so that's fantastic. Let's do a little bit of this now. What? Why can't I do that anymore? I don't have enough crude iron, or... Yeah, I don't have enough crude iron. Okay, let me just do a little bit more of this. A little bit more of that. There we go. Okay, so now now that we can use this blade, I'm pretty happy. So, let's see. Uh, I want swing speed to be relatively fast. So, let's make it around 95. I don't really care too much about the guard itself. Even though it does make it look a lot better if you have a cool looking guard, right? So, I don't know whether I should even bother with it, to be honest. Maybe I'll go for something like... I don't know, I'll just go for the most basic one, I guess. And now let's see, what else do we have here? These are all way, way, way high difficulty, by the way. As you can quite clearly tell. This is a nice handle. I like this grip quite a bit. Uh, is there anything that happens here? The swing speed is reduced. Swing speed... Does this actually make any difference? Yeah, it does, actually. Look at that. The swing speed does change dependent on the weight of this thing. I, 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 I guess. I have no idea. Mm, a little bit. A little bit of a little bit of a difference. Okay. Otherwise, what do we have here? What does this do? This just gives length, 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 and length. Okay. Does it really matter? Not particularly. So, I guess we'll just go with that. Okay, let's just go with that and see what happens. Okay, so, thrust speed, don't care about that. I do care about the swing cutting damage and the handling, but we'll see how it goes. So, um, let's see now. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. One-handed one baked goods. Yes. There we are. Fantastic. Don't ask me. I know. I know. It's an amazing name and you want that for your firstborn, don't you? Yes, I know. You can't have it, but 
you know, I, I appreciate the, I appreciate the thought. One-handed baked goods. I mean, <clears throat> Mr. or Mrs. One-handed baked goods. Oh yes, it's a, it's an extremely rare and exquisite name that uh, everyone wants. Obviously, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so uh, that's gonna be it for this episode. A uh, pretty, uh, pretty good one. Pretty good uh, progression that we've had right here. And next time. I'm going to continue my crusade against the Batanians, and we will make them suffer even more than us preying upon their weakened army, because that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't dishonorable in the least. Well, technically it wasn't, because it's war, but still. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.